pH of, uh, you know, specifically when growing with synthetic nutrients in cocoa, what is the optimal pH range? It's hydroponic. So the plant is, for the most part, interacting directly with the water. It's not sort of mitigated by any other cation exchange or microbial activity or, or anything like that. So we keep generally for for hydroponic nutrients the pH between 5.5 and, and 6.5 is what's often quoted. I would never kind of push out those extremes. Um, calcium is more available at the higher end of that range. So early on, I, I usually recommend growers in cocoa start at like 6.2 ish. Um, but then buy early veg have worked down, you know, in the high fives and allow the pH to sort of drift up. pH almost always drifts up if you're mixing nutrient water. So to set it like 5.8 and allow it to drift up to 6, 6.1, 6.2, um, you know, in that range, allowing it to drift back and forth a little bit ensures that plants have good access to the different chelated nutrients that are sort of more accessible at different points along that pH scale. Um, you don't want to drill it in at 5.6 for too long, basically, because calcium's not very available that low. You also don't want to sort of drill it in at at 6.4 for too long. Um, phosphorus isn't very available there. so keeping it kind of in the middle of that range. The other thing I suggest with most forms of a hydroponics, certainly with any form of drain to waste hydroponics, um, is to only measure the inflow pH. Don't measure the outflow or the runoff pH. Now in our DWC recirculating systems, you know, you got to measure both. It's all kind of the same thing. Um, and in DWC, you got to just measure the, whatever they're sitting in. But in a, a drained away setting where you're doing top feed in cocoa, the important thing about pH is that the water that you're providing has nutrients that are accessible. You are not, I really can't stress this enough, you are not trying to like change the runoff pH by altering the inflow pH. That's a fool's errand. I've seen dozens and dozens of growers torch their plants by doing that. Their runoff pH starts to drift high, often is what happens. And so they'll just go lower and lower and lower with the inflow. And they're telling me I'm feeding at five and I'm still getting these plant issues and my runoff is still 6.8 or something. It's like, okay, stop feeding at five. <laughs> like you can't, you can't do that. That. That's a problem. You should never got so you can chase your tail like that so easily and just run yourself right out of sort of what the acceptable range is. So much so, I tell growers literally don't measure the runoff pH. Expect it to swing because because of cation exchange with the plant, um, you know things are going to happen to that water that's going to knock around that pH. Oftentimes, it's not a problem. Um, we'll never look at the pH, the runoff pH, in, except as a secondary sort of diagnosis, diagnosis tool. If you're having problems with, with e maintaining EC, for example, if your runoff EC is always high, so you do check the runoff EC, but not the pH. But if it's always high and we can't knock it down, eventually I'm going to tell, okay, let's figure out what the EC or the pH is. And we'll try to get deeper into a diagnosis about what's going on like that. But no, as part of your general practice, make sure the water you're providing to the, the plant is in the correct range and just don't even worry about what the runoff's coming in at. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrowAt15 to save on any of their products. Thank you.